Here's what's ahead on Valley News Live at 10, the global internet outage that plunged multiple systems into darkness. We're finding out more as the days go by. And the West Acres Mall is getting a new tenant. Find out more about your potential shopping options expanding. Two universities in the state are teaming up to provide a more cohesive nursing program. Find out who and what it entails here on Valley News Live at 10. Well, welcome to Valley News Live at 10 on this Saturday evening. I'm Gabriel Osler. Things are getting back to normal, but the world is still reeling from that global technological breakdown that resulted from just one faulty software update. Everyone felt the impact in some way. CBS News correspondent Dana Backus went to Los Angeles and tells us how it impacted the port of Los Angeles. The Port of Los Angeles says the global internet outage backed up trucks waiting to get into the port Friday morning. Dozens of semis stuck for hours trying to get access to a key loading dock area. A lot of people around the country and around the world are shocked to discover that a single issue with a single piece of software can have that many knock on implications. Friday's failure disrupted banks, hospitals, stores and border crossings, especially hard hit airlines across the globe. Our Boston flight is delayed five hours and then our Greece uh, flight is canceled and we're supposed to get on a cruise on Monday morning. The IT crash caused by a CrowdStrike software meltdown caused thousands of flight delays and cancellations. Sandy Ouellette was struggling to get from North Carolina to Connecticut for her brother's funeral. I needed to get there before 3 o'clock today with the funeral. I'm reading the eulogy. CrowdStrike, a Texas-based cybersecurity company, says the problem arose when it deployed a faulty update to computers running Microsoft Windows. It's the biggest global IT outage that we've ever seen in the world. And definitely a black eye moment for CrowdStrike. Microsoft said it's been gradually resolving the faulty update and is now monitoring the situation until it's fully resolved. It is a manual process. It actually requires somebody to be at the machine, reboot the machine in a certain environment, take out the update and then restart the machine. So it's not unfortunately a very quick fix. 911 call centers were also disrupted in several states. Officials posted warnings and shared alternate phone numbers on social media while service was being restored. Donya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, American Airlines does say it has recovered its operations and expected to deliver reliable service all of today, but the carrier does still have a travel alert in effect for its entire network. Even Hector International here in Fargo experienced delays due to the outage. Well, enough of that technology stuff. Let's focus on the terrestrial, the weather. We've got First Alert Storm Team Joseph Williams over here with that. Joseph. Yeah, that's right. We saw a pretty decent afternoon across our region today. Just some of that smoky haze thanks to wildfire smoke lingering in our region. And while it did lead to a hazy afternoon sky, on the bright side, it led to a pretty cool looking sunset. This photo was sent to us from Devil's Lake uh, by Andrew. Thank you so much for sending this our way. Other areas we also saw some cloud cover thanks to a line of scattered storms moving through the northern half of our region. Still have a strong cell just to the north of Jamestown, making its way down south towards Buchanan, uh, moving south, southeast at around 25 miles per hour. We did have a report of hail in the northern half of our region, thanks to this cell, but the hailstones were pretty small. But basically, these were your classic summertime storms this afternoon and evening. Right now in Fargo, not seeing any rain. Temperature is 77 degrees, feeling like 79, thanks to that humidity and dew point generally in the mid 70s across the rest of our region. And as we head into the overnight hours, we should be at least be partly clear, but I am tracking the potential for some more scattered storm activity over the next couple of days, and I'll go over that in the full forecast. All right, sounds good, Joseph. I hope those scattered storms miss me. Well, if you don't already have this, make sure you get it, the VNL Weather app. It will give you interactive radar no matter where you go. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store today. Well, we're taking a look at the ever chaotic campaign trail in the lead up to the November elections. An activist group rallied in front of the White House today, calling on President Joe Biden to step aside as it pertains to the next presidential race. The group is called Pass the Torch, and their aims are pretty clear from the name of the organization. They're also demanding that the DNC slows any efforts to hold an early virtual nomination. Aaron Regenberg, a former state representative from Rhode Island, is a leader of Pass the Torch. His message is one of gratitude, but also one of urgency. President Biden has been, without a doubt, 
the best president in my lifetime. He is also, without a doubt, not our best standard bearer for the 2024 election. Pass the Torch went on to claim that Americans have made their mind up about Biden, believing that he has demonstrated that he cannot effectively communicate the Democrats' message, which would be imperative to the goal of defeating Donald Trump. Speaking of the former president, him and his newly picked vice presidential running mate, J.D. Vance of Ohio, were in the key state of Michigan today. It was their first rally together as a ticket, and it's also the first rally since last Saturday in Pennsylvania when there was an attempt on Trump's life. CBS's Kelly Vaughn reports from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan. Ready to hear from the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Come on out, sir. Former President Donald Trump and his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, debuted their campaign ticket at their first rally in the battleground state of Michigan. In his remarks, Trump addressed last week's assassination attempt and political rhetoric against him. They keep saying he's a threat to democracy. I'm saying, what the hell did I do for democracy? Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Amid extra tight security here in Grand Rapids, some supporters waited in line for days to see the newly minted presidential ticket's first public event. Trump brings the energy. I want to see that. I want to feel that. He's my hero. He's, he is carrying the torch for this com country. President Biden is spending the weekend at his Delaware Beach home while he recovers from COVID-19. The president remains defiant, refusing to step away from his re-election bid after last month's poor debate performance, even as more than 30 Democrats urge him to call it quits. If President Biden decides to step back, we have Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, who is ready. Despite mounting public pressure, the Biden-Harris campaign is moving ahead with plans for the president to return to the campaign trail. Kelly Vaughn, CBS News, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Well, as you just heard there, Biden and his team do continue to insist that he will stay in the race, but there are rumblings from private sources that he is increasingly accepting that he may indeed have to step aside. Well, turning to a local focus, the West Acres Mall is getting an upscale new tenant. It's J. Crew. J. Crew Factory, to be exact, so you know the deals will be excellent. It's opening up this fall in Buffalo Court, near the soon-to-be Von Mar. Von Mar is still on track for a spring 2025 opening, so J. Crew will beat them to that spot. Mall reps say the J. Crew Factory will have options for men, women, and children. You can keep up with the mall happenings on their Facebook page. We just so happen to have a link to that in this story on valleynewslive.com. Well, two North Dakota state universities are combining forces to ensure that nursing education goes forward. Dickinson State has recently seen a mass resignation of their nursing program faculty, so Mayville State is providing shared nurse administrators. While they do come from Mayville, they will be recognized as DSU faculty. This is on short notice as the fall semester begins just about a month from now. Students question how clinicals will be held or who will be teaching them. Regardless, the collaboration begins on July 22nd and runs until May of next year. Year. We will have more details about the nature of the curriculum as they become available. Well, later on Valley News Live at 10, a star attraction of the North Dakota State Fair has been waylaid due to that global tech outage. Find out the modified details for that appearance. And we, aside from an isolated shower storm overnight, should be at least partly clear tonight. But I am looking at some more rain chances as well as some warm temperatures. I'll go over the details in the full forecast.